Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Attack on Productions. Fluff here, coming back at you with another deck profile. But before I get into that, please make sure to do the YouTube stuff. You know, like, comment, subscribe. We really do appreciate it. So this past Saturday, us and the local group went to the Louisville PPG event at TCGCon and had an absolute blast. Um, I ended up placing 19th place playing Sen Shenron. Um, I lost to a Janemba Mill player who ended up going into top eight. And I lost against a a scrub who decided to slow play me and the judge wouldn't do anything about it. Um, but that's not why we're here. We're here to look at the list. The list overperformed. Uh, basically every other match I went 2-0 and with where I just slung out my opponent except for Nick who was playing U7 and we decided to take the draw against each other uh, but time, though, right? that was because of time yeah. yeah so we took the draw because of time so this is the list I'm going to go over the list I've got my sideboard with me here uh, I guess matches at uh, round one I played SS4 Vegeta and then I'm winning that match round two I played Trunk Zeno, I won that match. Round three was against Universe 7, Nick. I took the draw. Round four was against Janemba Mill. I lost that match. Um, round five was against a uh, Ramp Vegeta. He slow played me and I lost that match. The next round was against um, King Piccolo. I ended up winning that match 2-0. And then last match was against Cooler Mill and I won that 2-0. So... Overall, super fun event. Uh, this is what I played, so we'll get into it. Looking at the leader, <clears throat> on the front side, the leader is just a consistency monster. On a swing, you get to look at your top five. Uh, add any shadow dragon among them, add it to your hand. Then at the end of the turn, you restand one of your dragons. And then his awakening condition is when you're at three life, <clears throat> three or less life, or you have a unison with a specified cost of four in play. You draw two cards, untap one of your energy, and flip it over. On the back side, you switch to getting a draw per swing, but then at the end of the turn, you get to restand all of your Shadow Dragons on your side of the field. And for six energy, you can play up to seven Shadow Dragons with different card names from your drop area to your field. I never once had to activate that effect over the event to win, or in any of my games. I never had to actually activate that effect. I feel like that effect is probably a bait in the weak spot of the deck because if you get hit with like a God Sealing Trunks, you lose your entire tempo and everything just comes back to your hand. So definitely don't want to do that. So that's the leader. Getting into the actual deck itself, I played two Mecha Kabora Plotting Revival. These are the only two unisons that I play in the entire list. It is really weird that I only play two, but the deck ultimately draws so much that you're liable to see these by the time that you awaken or you're already at three life. Your opponent will generally focus more on wasting their resources on getting your dragons off the field more than focusing into your life. So I found a lot of the times I was at like six life going into turn four, turn five, and then finding my unison, awakening by unison, and being awakened at six life. So I'm running two of these. These are great blockers. If they lose a marker, you get to tap an opponent's card. Uh, plus one, you draw one card, choose one of your opponent's battle cards. Ignoring barrier, that card can't be switched to active mode until the end of your opponent's next turn. And then minus four, you get to steal one of your opponent's cards. I almost never use this card for the minus four effect. I did use it once, but a lot of the time I would just put it out, keep it as a blocker, plus one, swing with it. Uh, you could minus four to steal one of the cards, hold it for them to put out their big boss monster, stall out their boss monster, and then steal it from them and swing through. So two of those. The main engine of the deck is going to be the Sen Shenron line. So in that line, we're playing four of the negative energy one star balls. That's just the starter. Then we play Sen Shenron, Shadow Dragon Leader. This is the four drop. The most important aspect of this is when it's played, you choose a battle card or leader card, and that card can't attack during your opponent's next turn. So oftentimes against stuff like SS4 Vegeta, Soul Striker, um, which I did play in the first round. I, th I might have said Vegeta Ramp, but I played Soul Striker in the first round. Or King Piccolo... 
matches like that where they're very leader intensive or even King Cold, it just really slows those decks down to about half their efficiency. So you want to be putting that out. Then if this card is removed by skill, you draw one card and play a ball from your drop area. And then the big boy nine drop sends Shenron Destruction Incarnate. This is the MVP of the deck, I think. It's Blocker Revenge on a 30,000 body. So it's pretty stout. This is usually the card that you're going to be swinging with, restanding at the end of every turn. And then when your opponent plays a battle card, you choose that card, ignoring barrier and negate its skills for the turn. So your opponent gets on play autos, but they don't get their double strikes, dual attacks. They don't get to use their activate mains. They don't get to do a bunch of stuff like that. Um, and even with a lot of the overwhelms, like fighting against fate, your opponent will fighting against fate. Overwhelm is already activated. Its skills are negated. They don't get the dual attack off of it. And then it leaves the field at the end of the turn. So it completely shuts those down. And then if your opponent removes this card for any reason, you pretty much get a draw two and play a ball from the drop area, which resets your chain, which lets you lock the leader down again. I found that opponents would oftentimes focus on trying to get this guy off the field instead of just playing intelligently around it. And what would end up happening is I would end up drawing a ton of cards while my opponent ended up wasting a ton of cards and a ton of energy getting rid of it. So it's a real tempo killer either way you cut it. The rest of the Shadow Dragon package, I run three of Ice Shenron. These are just for fetching balls and being play targets for Nova as 15,000 bodies. I don't really use them for their counterplay effect. I don't think I've ever used the counterplay effect once. It's not really worth all that. Then I run two Oceanus Swift Spirals. Uh, these let you restand your blockers after you've blocked with them. So you block with the big Shenron, your opponent combos up to 30, maybe they waste two or three cards in their hand. You combo with an Oceanus, restand it, get over their combo, and then you're safe to block again. So it was a great way to get the opponent to waste energy. Plus it's a dual attack, which is a great card to steal, a great effect to steal with the Omega Shenron that we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so two of these. Then I ran two of these surprise attack nature on Shinron. Um, these guys are double strike 15,000 bodies. But then when your opponent plays a battle card or unison, you get to choose that card, switch it to rest mode, and then negate the skill for the turn. So once per turn, you get to stun one of your opponent's plays. I don't know how many times I had an opponent play a unison to try to, to try to pressure me. And I just switched the unison to rest mode. They pretty much tapped themselves out to do it or spent most of their energy doing it. It's really good against King Piccolo when they're trying to go aggressive in the early turn. It's really good against Blue when they're trying to put out a pressuring unison or something like that. Plus, this is another free target for the Nova Shenron that we'll talk about in a little bit to play out. So Ice and this are the two plays off of the Nova Shenron. So we run two of those because we want to see it. The consistency engine of the deck are four of the Oceana Shenron. These cards are absolutely amazing at sifting through the top five cards of your deck for a, Sen Shen or a Shenron card with an energy cost of eight or less. So the only card that it doesn't grab is the big boy incarnate, um, which is okay because our leader can find this and usually we're molding for one of these at the start of the game. The Oceanus is also a good target to steal effects off the Omega Shenron, especially once you're awakened, because she has blocker barrier, and then on swing, she gets to tap a card, and if it's a energy cost of two or less, you KO that card. So if your opponent is trying to put out something like a Black Mass Saiyan to stop your balls, you can use this to get rid of the Black Mass Saiyan. Um, there was one game that I actually tapped four to play her. I think this was against the Janimba Mill player, and I ended up winning the match because I put her out and removed the BMS. So she's good on her own, and then she's also great to steal the effect with Omega Shenron. So four of those, she's super necessary. I run four of the Nova Shenron. These are our early game aggro packages. So on a burst two, you tap him and play another Shadow Dragon with an energy cost between two and four and less than 19,000 power attack from your drop area. So like I said, the two that we're looking for, Ice Shenron and Natron Shenron, you pretty much always have access to one of the two targets to play out. Um, 
And then also this guy's a 15,000 blocker. What ended up happening is a lot of people, this is one of the weaker shadow dragons that you play in the deck. So your opponent would oftentimes target this guy for attacks and just swing at him and to try to remove him to keep you from getting to be able to play the Ice Shinron or Natron Shinron again the next turn if they remove it. So it was just a great way to... It's almost like having a Deadly Defender without having the Deadly Defender statistic behind it. So four of those, so you could cut that down to a three of, but I found four to work really well, especially for the early aggro matches. Um... Then I run, I main four Haze Shenron. These are almost specifically for their combo effect where you combo them, discard a card, and then destroy one of your opponent's battle cards with an energy cost greater than their current energy. So I don't know how many times someone would play an Overrealm, swing in, combo up, throw a Champa on it, and then I just hazed and blew the card up. Or against Universe 7, if they play the Goku or Secret Rare, they swing, they combo up to try to kill you, you just haze, pop, pop the card itself there are some matchups especially blue where this card isn't fantastic and you'll just usually sideboard out of them but it is a twenty thousand double strike if you ever have to cast it or it's a good card to copy effects with with the omega shenron that we're going to talk about next that i play at a three of so this is omega shenron ally absorbed so basically the way that he works he's a thirty thousand unique you have to destroy a Shadow Dragon on your side of the field to be able to play him. So generally the play is Nova Shenron into Ice Shenron. Ice Shenron swing, your opponent takes the damage or combos out. You then pay one energy, blow up the Ice Shenron, play the Omega Shenron, and then steal like a Natron or Oceanus effect in your drop area with his effect. Um, on play he draws, so he's a 30,000 cantrip, which is absolutely amazing. And then also his absorption effect from the drop area is another way that you can awaken yourself if you're not seeing your unisons. So say you have a haze in the drop area and you eat the haze. He now becomes a 30,000 double strike that handed you a life to your hand. So we play three of these. They're absolutely amazing. There was never a moment that I wanted one that I didn't have one just because the deck is absolutely that consistent. The last Shadow Dragon that we play is the Omega Shinron. The... The tournament promo, um, I'm not going to try to read that name because it's tiny and forever long, but this is another example of a one-cost cantrip that draws you a card, but he's a 30,000 triple strike, and the only caveat is that you have to warp seven Shadow Dragons from your drop area. Um <clears throat> They don't have to be different names. It can just be any seven. So if you have multiple balls, multiple nine drops, multiple four drops. Um, there were multiple games where I was able to play this guy out on turn three. Like, I've had games where my opponent will throw down an Oceanus Shenron to try to mill me out or get me to stop my turn. And I'll keep swinging, mill all my Shadow Dragons into the drop area off the Oceanus effect, drop this guy, and kill on turn three. Uh, it comes out of nowhere. Your opponent has to be ready for it. And if your opponent has already dealt with all the wide attacks on your field, the big 30,000 bodies, they burnt their negates, they're tapped out, throwing this guy down and then going in and making them combo out of that is really good. There were several situations where I had like two or three cards in hand and my opponent had like seven or eight. And I threw one of these guys down, swung with it, and my opponent would combo out of it and come down to that three, four card count in hand just to not die to this card and then they'd blow up my nine drop I'd go up to like six cards in hand and then they'd start attacking my leader realizing they have to try to close the game out and I'd go up to you know I'd go from like two to three cards in hand to like nine or ten over the course of a turn or two because my opponent would just play into what this deck wants to do so three of these just to make sure you see them and to make sure you draw one instead of bursting your only two copies. I had it at a two of, and I usually ended up bursting both copies. So at a three of, I usually get to see one before they're all bursted. Moving into the non shadow dragon stuff that I played, I decided to play for the Moss sacred disbelief. Um, I don't regret not playing the draw super combos, but I think what I will end up changing in this deck is I will do two Samas and then two Chilai just to be able to tap unisons because there were situations where I wanted to tap down unisons but couldn't do it for one reason or another. 
Um, and, and a lot of games, you don't even draw your super combos because the deck so heavily tutors the shadow dragons to your hand that you may only draw one super combo per game. And I never really felt like I needed the extra draw strength from like Krillin. And like I said, most games I was sitting at six life for the majority of the game anyway, and Krillin's would have just been dead. So I ran Force of Moss Sacred Disbelief and didn't really regret that. Like I said, in the future, I will probably opt to run two Zamas, two Chilais, just f for the option of tapping down Unisons. So four of those. <clears throat> One drop battle cards. I run Cooler. Uh, cooler gets milled a lot of the time, but in instances where you're ready to, you know, kick off the game and you're ready to end the game having a cooler in hand swinging with your dragons waiting for your opponent to commit to their hatchiac or commit to their topo tapping themselves out you can cooler end the effect and keep swinging through and win the game that way uh, i think cooler is absolutely necessary in this deck even to the point that moving forward i think i'm going to start testing the deck with two of them just to make sure that you see them so one cooler one furthering destruction champa uh thirty thousand that you throw a Champa on, especially if you throw it on like your big Shenron or your Omega Shenron after giving it like dual attack, you can swing, make them take the one swing again, then throw this on it, make it a 40,000 double strike. Your opponent has to combo out of it pretty hard to get out of it. Um, I did see this a few times and, and I've used it to clear unisons. You don't have to run this card. I've won plenty of matches without seeing a single Champa in the entire game, but just having Champa there is oftentimes incredibly useful. The controversial part of my deck that a lot of people couldn't agree on was the secret rare. Traditionally, the Shadow Dragons are ran with Xeno Cell as their secret rare, but I opted to play Supreme Kai of Time mainly for the board clear, um, particularly big blue unisons or big unisons that might enable a floodgate or might stop my plays from going through. So if my opponent were to put out, say, the boo blue unison or the, the blue boo unison, I could use this to clear the unison off the field without giving them an opportunity to respond to this card coming in. Um, I did use this card a couple times. I used it once against the KP player to blow up his field. It just shut down his entire tempo. I used this against the Soul Striker player and against the SS4 Vegeta player, and they pretty much just lost their place in the game. Um, if you use it at the right time, your opponent has already committed with their battle cards and they haven't gone in with their leader card and battle card and you can stop those attacks for the rest of the turn. So it's just another way to control the game out. You could play it with Zeno Cell, uh, but I find when you play with Cell, you're more likely to make ignorant decisions based on the ability to play Cell. So I wanted to just have this to go and I was well rewarded for it. I think the only thing that I might choose differently is maybe I would test Pan in the future, but Supreme Kai did a fantastic job overall. Moving into my extra cards, I don't run a ton of negates, but I run a control, a ton of control options at weird ratios. So we run one power of a Super Saiyan. If I could run more, I would run more, definitely. Um, never really play it now that it's at a one of it usually ends up getting milled uh, but when you can play it it always feels really good i run two realm of the gods black kamehameha in the main board um, this is for wide matchups that feel like the board is getting out of control you can use this turn off the turn off a lot of the pressure that's coming down prevent yourself from taking a damage and get a draw or on your turn if your opponent has a problematic battle card like i know the blue goku that prevents your uh, battle cards from attacking leader cards if you swing into that card and throw a black power down they just lose that card and then they're defenseless a lot of the time so using this for that reason then i ran three vegeta's final flash seems a little heavy on final flash but you want to be able to turn off your opponent's kills. If your opponent's trying to kill you with a double strike or something or a triple strike and you just turn that skill off and only take one damage, your opponent will oftentimes invest into that. Or maybe there's other instances where you need to turn off particular effects before they happen. Like I know uh, in testing, there were times where I would turn off the Vegeta secret rare before it even made its first swing. 
like if it was on the field before that or if there was a Goku remaining on the field, something like that. So I played three of these. You end up bursting one or two of them per game. And if your opponent sees that you've bursted two, they don't think you have a third in your hand and they're more, more likely to commit to that. Um, I ran two Frieza Army Reinforcements. Didn't use it the entire day. I could probably drop this card. I thought it would be nice to have. And then Flying Nimbus, I would probably bump this up to a three of in the main board just because of stuff like King Piccolo, Zeno Trunks, things like that that are going really aggressive in the first two or three turns of the game. So that is the list. It's a 56 card list. It seems like it would be really inconsistent uh, from that reason alone. But the deck is such a consistent engine itself that 56 cards doesn't hurt it. Um, looking at the sideboard, kind of what I ended up citing in, I went three Dragon Thunder. This went in for the U7 matchup. It went in for the King Piccolo matchup. And it went in for the Zeno Trunks matchup, particularly. Um, this was for any deck that went wide that weren't using big bodies. So anything that was under 20,000 now had to combo harder to get through to my leader as a free Senzu Bean. And if you're playing this plus Vegeta's Final Flash, you're essentially running six copies of a skill negate on demand. So I ran two of those. I ran two Frieza Divine Transformation. Um, I cited these for the blue matchup and for other control yellow matchups like Trunks Vegeta. I only cited it in during one of my games and I ended up losing that game. It didn't do too much for me. So I probably wouldn't side that in the future and I would probably find room for something else. Uh, for Universe 7, Zeno Trunks, anything that plays off curve where they're playing large battle cards. I ran the Vegeta Unison of Fury. This was super good against a large number of decks that I played against. And then usually when I cited that in, I brought in one Sen Shenron Negative Energy Explosion. A lot of decks don't have a solution to this card. So if you have a unison on the field, you tap four, play this card. You've now got a double strike dual attacker that's going to mill your opponent out that has deflect and barrier on it. So your opponent can't really touch it. And it was very rare. Like, I think I ended up citing this in against U7 and it came in pretty clutch. Um, two Oceana Shinrons. This was pretty much mainly specifically for U7. Um... I never really cited it in. I will probably cut that from the side moving forward. And then I ran three Dark Power Black Mass Sands. This was really good in the King Piccolo matchup, particularly uh, just because you don't really activate Negate, so they don't get to pop it for free with their King Piccolo. So they have to kind of go out of their way to find a way to get rid of Dark Power Black Mass Sand. I also cited this in against the... Um, I didn't bring it in against Zeno Trunks because they could just remove it. I think I cited in against U... No, it wasn't against U7. This would have been good against the Trunks-Vegeta uh, matchup as well from my figuring. But that was the sideboard. That's the whole deck that I ended up playing. I love this deck. I ordered a metal leader from TCG Metals for the event. Um, it didn't get here, so I didn't feel right using that in the profile here because I didn't get to play with it that way. For everyone that I did play at Gen Con or at TCG Con, I had an absolute blast at the event. The only match that I didn't really appreciate was getting slow played by the Vegeta Ramp player. I'm not going to mention names. It just sucked. It was a shitty feeling. And if you have to slow play to win your games, you're a scuzzy piece of shit. That's all I'm going to say. Um, I hope I never have to play you again, and I hope you stop coming because the Dragon Ball community is way better than that. Um, but as always, read your cards, know your plays, let us make mistakes so that you don't have to, and as always, fluff out.